Hi, welcome to Bookie, which unlock big ideas from world bestsellers in audio, text, and mind map. Please download Bookie at Apple Store or Google Play with more features. Get your free mind snack now. Today we'll unlock the book Art as Therapy. Speaking of art, some may find it too highbrow and mysterious for ordinary people to appreciate, so they refrain from proactively enjoying it or learning about it. When was the last time you went to an art exhibition or a concert? And when was the last time you read an art book? Many people refrain from taking part in art activities. After all, in this fast-paced society, people prefer to use their time for things that they deem useful. However, the majority of people misunderstand the true meaning of usefulness. Is having a new car useful? Or moving into a bigger house? Or getting a promotion? Can these worldly possessions truly decide how happy we are? We live our lives like a spinning top, always in motion. Sometimes, we may break down and have a fight with our partners. We may be unable to sleep in the middle of the night. We may feel empty inside after a busy day at work, and lose our desire for new experiences. In a word, we are too busy with our livelihood to take care of our spiritual and psychological needs. This book includes a page showing a photograph titled Divorce in Moscow. This black-and-white picture taken by Eve Arnold shows a divorcing Russian couple sitting on a bench, looking in different directions. The woman looks sad and lonely, while the man seems angry with his back bent and hand held to his cheek. Though they sit next to each other, they are emotionally separate. One can clearly sense the helplessness and sorrow in this photo. No caption is needed for people to relate to it, because the feelings inspired by it transcend both borders and age. This work of art serves as a warning, reminding us to live in the moment. This picture and many other examples given by the book show that art is part of ordinary life. We can actually use art as a form of therapy to heal our psychological wounds, satisfy our emotional needs, and increase our self-knowledge. Thus, we can live a better life. Artist Therapy was jointly written by two authors. One of them, Alanda Button is a well-known best-selling author. He graduated from the University of Cambridge. His most famous works include Status Anxiety, The Consolations of Philosophy, and How Proust Can Change Your Life. In 2008, De Button founded the School of Life, which offers the public advice on various aspects of life through books, seminars, and talks. You can find the book he related to Status Anxiety on our platform. If you are interested in learning more about this topic, you can listen to it. The second author John Armstrong is a philosopher and a theorist of art, who is currently a professorial fellow at the University of Tasmania. He has written many well-received books on art, such as The Intimate Philosophy of Art, Conditions of Love, and In Search of Civilization. In this bookie, we'll introduce art as therapy in the following three sections. Part 1. What Counts as Good Art? Part 2. What are the functions of art? Part 3, a new artistic direction for therapeutic purpose. First, let's take a look at what exactly counts as good art. According to De Button and Armstrong, good art is often defined by a complex system, which includes ideology, funding, education and support from museums. These factors all influence and guide how the majority of people see art. Next, let's talk about what counts as good art using five different perspectives. From the technical perspective, good art can create brand new ways of representing reality. Take Leonardo da Vinci for example. He was crucial because he was an early adopter of sfumato, an artistic technique for showing shapes without using outlines. This technique signified a breakthrough in the history of artistic representation. From a political standpoint, a work of art is good if it manifests human dignity, truth, and justice, and if it is both positive and progressive while simultaneously looking towards the future. From this point of view, Thomas Gainsborough's Mr. and Mrs. Andrews is a good work of art. This painting depicts Mr. and Mrs. Andrews relaxing on their property. They own their own land, and they don't have to till the soil or bring in the harvest, 
they simply enjoy the fruits of others' labor. Through the depiction of the couple's facial expressions, Gainsborough suggests that they are smug and mean-spirited. The picture criticizes the morally corrupt dominant landowning class, so it is a progressive work of art which falls under a political point of view. From a historical perspective, a work of art is valuable if it shows us a piece of history. Artwork can vividly reflect how people lived in the past. It can also show the environmental, commercial, and religious practices of that time. Take Vittore Carpaccio, a famous Renaissance painter for example. His painting The Healing of a Man Possessed by a Demon serves as a precious record of a famous bridge before it was reconstructed. It also provides valuable knowledge about the architecture of Venice from around 1500. Furthermore, it is also highly instructive about the role of religion in civic life, the ceremonial processions, how patricians and gondoliers used to dress, and what kinds of hairstyles people went in for. In a word, this painting is of great significance to our understanding of that era. Art can also be valued for its capacity to shock people. Some artwork breaks social norms and shocks viewers, inducing various emotions. These works are also considered to be good art. While they may be shocking and disturbing, they challenge us to break away from what we take for granted and what limits us. The therapeutic reading of art is introduced as the fifth perspective from which one can judge art. It is also the core concept of this book. A work can be good or bad, depending on how well it caters to our inner needs, or how well it can address our psychological frailties. From this perspective, whether artwork is deemed good or not per se is not important to us. What matters is whether it can influence or inspire us, whether it can compensate for our flaws. Our forgetfulness, our loss of hope, our search for dignity, our difficulties with self-knowledge, or our longing for love. That concludes the first part. We learned how to read art from a technical, political, historical, shock value, and therapeutic perspective. The main goal of this book is to help you appreciate art from the therapeutic point of view. Today we are just sharing limited content. To unlock more key insights of world-class bestseller please download our app. Just search for B-O-O-K-E-Y at Apple Store or Google Play. Get your free mind snack now.